you know, the records show close to 55,000 people have been buried here, and we only have about 5,000 tombstones. That's roughly 50,000 people that don't have markers of where they are and who they were. So we're trying to help find some of those people. Burials began at Union Cemetery in 1857, when all this was farmland between Westport and Kansas City. Known as the final resting place for some of the area's earliest notables, the unknowns that Heather mentioned often ended up in so-called potter's fields on the graveyard's northeast side, with at most a small wooden marker. Over time, that overcrowded corner actually spilled out human remains when workers built roads around the perimeter, and a quarry on the cemetery's northern edge unearthed more than just rock. I mean, I know that they had to bring land in to fill some of the swampy areas, so I know that that had to have played a role in how people were buried and where they were buried. Even for those with resources, harsh social realities determined who went where. This whole section behind me was just for black people to be buried. Like they were sectioned off to here and one other side of the cemetery. If you were of Asian descent, a lot of times they wouldn't even bury you here. It might not be our favorite thing to talk about or something that's positive, but just because it's not positive doesn't mean it's not part of our history and it shouldn't be told. Here in the Sexton's Cottage, this is one of several file cabinets jammed with a dizzying array of records and brochures, deeds and documents collected since the Historical Society started in 1984. These are photocopies of all of the Sexton's logs that we have starting after the fire in 1889. This is where someone purchased a plot to be buried here in 1860, it looks like. Here's some more impressive old school work. These three by five index cards, there are boxes of them, have been painstakingly filled out with info on each of the cemetery's known residents. To make all this available online, volunteers are working with a program called, appropriately, Crypt Keeper, entering data as well as photos and obits when they can. Well, this one that I'm working on right now is a murder victim. He owned a, his name is Frank Barnum. He owned a hotel in Kansas City. And that's more sensational than most, Jody admits. The ledgers are usually full of everyday people, teachers, bankers, workers, and bosses. Almost all of them were Kansas City residents, were loved and, you know, honored by their families with funerals and burials here in the cemetery, and you want to kind of preserve that. I feel when I'm scanning information about people, I'm learning about that person. So I guess, yeah, I am learning something new every day. <laughs> Linda's interest in genealogy inspired her to volunteer here last May. She's drawn by the mix of history, and when things come together, solving small mysteries. I do have empathy for people, especially people who are looking for family members. They might have seen a death certificate that says they were buried in Union Cemetery, and when they come over to look, we try our best to help them find where that person is buried, but it's not always, not always possible. You know, we're all volunteers, and bringing that history to light is really rewarding and the reason that we started volunteering in the first place.